This tutorial will cover the creation of isolated footings and once analyzed its calculation sheet and detailed drawing. Once all of the supports have been created and the global settings have been established, the next step is to create a job. Go to Create a new job under Job Setup. Here a job name is required. Then choose which supports will be assigned to the isolated job. I will create an isolated job using only supports 1, 2, 4, and 5. Choose the load cases which will be used for the isolated job's design. Usually these are service and ultimate load combinations. Finally, create job. Notice a new group in the main navigator is created called isolated footing job, which can be used to specify appropriate design parameters. Changes made to the local settings are only applicable to the current job. Concrete and Reinforcement provides input for concrete and reinforcement related information, such as the concrete unit weight, yield strength of steel, and strength of concrete. It also has minimum and maximum reinforcement options. The user has to specify the minimum and maximum bar spacing, footing bar size, and pedestal bar size to give the user flexibility to optimize the foundation design. If set as default is set to yes, Whenever a new job of the same type is created, its default concrete and reinforcement settings will be set to the ones currently specified. The set as default setting is used for all design parameters and some global settings as well. As its name suggests, cover and soil is related to concrete cover and soil related information. One of the advanced options is to choose between drained or undrained condition. Depending on which option you selected, either the cohesion or undrained shear strength value will become available for input. This option can be used to include adhesion force if there is an uplift condition. Standard values are given for the rest of the cover and soil data. You can edit those as necessary. The other important option to use is the minimum allowable percentage of contact area option. During the design process, the program will incrementally adjust the footing size if the minimum allowable percentage of contact area is violated. If the footing thickness must increase, the user has the option to have a fixed top height and expand the footing downwards, or have a fixed bottom and expand upward. Choosing the latter runs the risk of the footing breaching ground level. Footing geometry provides four options for calculating the footing geometry. Each one gives the user unique input options to allow for customization. The first one, Calculate Dimension, allows the program to calculate the most efficient footing dimensions for each support given a range of values for the length, width, and thickness. Set Dimension option can be used to check a foundation for known dimensions. With Set Dimension, the user enters the exact dimension values into the minimum dimension rows. These values are set and will not change the maximum rows become unavailable as they are no longer needed. The Fixed Width option can be used if a designer needs to fix the width for boundary constraints or any other reason. It requires an inputted width which will remain constant and let STAD Foundation Advance design the length and all other parameters. Fixed Length is similar to the Fixed Width option except the length value is set and all other calculated in the design process. The plan dimension increment and thickness increment settings control the increment value when designing footing sizes. If the footing size is found to be failing, starting from its minimum value, and must be increased, it will be increased by this increment and then rechecked. Plan dimension increment controls the increment for length and width and thickness increment controls it for the thickness. Specifying these increments is to avoid any unrealistically specific footing dimensions and also for simplicity. Offset X and Z parameters can be used to specify column eccentricity. Keep in mind the orientation of the X and Z direction when entering these values. Length width ratio is only available in the calculate dimension option. It allows the user to specify footing shape. With sliding and overturning, the user can specify the coefficient of friction factor of safety against sliding, and the factor of safety against overturning. Click Design to design the isolated foundation using the current global and local settings. If these settings are changed, the job must be redesigned to take into account the changes. Once designed, the calculation sheet, 
GA drawing, and detail and schedule drawings become available. The calculation sheet specifies how each footing was designed. It includes detailed steps, figures, and references to the code which was used for design. This section gives a detailed account of the pedestal design calculations. If any pedestal is present, the program will automatically design a pedestal with biaxial moment. The detailed drawing gives GA plan, plan, and elevation views for individual footings. This drawing shows support and footing dimensions and any reinforcement. If there are pedestals or anchor bolts, their drawings are shown. The detailed drawing can be exported to CAD software such as MicroStation or AutoCAD using the Save Drawing As feature. Another feature I would like to mention is the global settings in the home ribbon. Under top reinforcement settings, the user has the option to either always calculate top reinforcement based on concrete and soil weight, even if no uplift is present, or to calculate the top reinforcement only when the foundation is subjected to uplift forces. If applicable, a self-weight factor for top reinforcement can be applied. Under concrete check self-weight settings, the user can either neglect footing self-weight for concrete check consider net pressure for concrete checks, or consider footing self-weight for concrete checks. The last option is only applicable to isolated footings. Of the three options, considering net pressure for concrete checks is the most common. Also, either the gross bearing capacity input or net bearing capacity input can be chosen. This option controls the bearing capacity type of the inputted value and the soil design parameters for all jobs. With reinforcement placement option, the reinforcement in the X and Z directions can be toggled between the top and bottom. For more information on these options, please refer to the context sensitive in the help menu. Thank you for watching.